So what you're describing are what you called files um, in your conversations with Casey, uh, one of your newsletters. A file is people that organize on the basis of common and shared interests regardless where they live in the world and it's made possible because of modern communication? Yeah, exactly. It was actually a, a term and actually an idea that was coined by the science fiction writer Neil Stevenson, whose books I recommend highly. And uh, he speculated that in the near-term future, this is the way the world could reorganize because the nation state is really a dysfunctional uh, way of organizing uh, people. Political organization itself is dysfunctional, of course. I, I don't believe the government as an entity has a right to exist. It's purely destructive. It inevitably draws the wrong kind of people, people that are interested in power and controlling other people as opposed to controlling reality. So, uh, yeah, I think that uh, as nation states self-destruct in the years to come, uh, people are social and they do like to organize, but I think a voluntary form of organization, which could even include insurance companies, self-defense contracts, and so forth, uh, might be completely transnational. Yeah, I mentioned conversations with Casey before I go on. I would just like to say that I really enjoy that publication and for the viewers of uh, this video, uh, you do it almost every week and it's free. How do people sign up for it? Well, just go to our company website, caseyresearch.com uh, and we have a number of free publications of which that is one. So just push the button and we'll send it to you. Okay. Um, one of the other things I read about in conversations with Casey, and I want to talk about that a little bit, is what you call singularity. Can you first explain what that is, and then we can get into more detailed discussion as to how you see it evolving? Yes, there's a guy, I haven't met him personally, uh, named Ray Kurzweil, who wrote a book by that name. And the point he makes is that technology is advancing very quickly today. Uh, basically at the rate of Moore's Law. And we're not just talking about computers, we're talking about biotech and many other areas of technology Which today. basically every six months computing power doubles, well, more well, or less. Or every year, or yeah. I don't know what the current number is. Yeah. But, but it's a very rapid rate of growth. Very rapid indeed. And uh, the point that Kurzweil makes is that, and you can see this happening now, we're at the stage where you can actually grow new body parts. It's possible now to, to grow new ligaments, uh, to grow new veins, and this is advancing and compounding basically according to Moore's law. Um, so it's happening in many areas of society, and what Kurzweil posits is that in a very finite period of time, like maybe 10 years, well 20 years anyway, we're going to reach the singularity where uh, will actually be able to do almost anything in a godlike way. And what it means is that if you can survive only another 20 years, perhaps, uh, you might be able to grow a, a brand new body. And not just any old body, maybe one that resembles Bruce Jenner's who won the, uh, the uh, decathlon uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, something like that. So anything is possible, and this is the best reason that I can think of for becoming wealthy, because uh, you want to be able to afford wonderful things like that. And uh, it's as it should be. Uh, the wealthy people are the ones that should have those things. Why? Because unless you steal wealth, uh, the way you get wealthy is by producing goods and services for other people you get wealthy by creating wealth. So, of course, uh, people that have money should be rewarded with being able to buy these things. Yeah, people like Steve Jobs, who just sadly passed away recently, exactly. uh, just think of all the things he's done to raise humankind's standard of living through his um, innovations, his technology, hard work, savings, production. If he just could have lived another 10 years Chances are not bad that a cure would have been found for his 
disease, and another 10 years beyond that, he could have replaced his, at that time, 75-year-old body with a nice, shiny new one. But what's the implications for singularity in the financial sector? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, one of the things that have to do with the singularity is the nanotechnic revolution. And uh, about 20 years ago, Eric Drexler, uh, who was really the originator of the term uh, nanotechnology, uh, wrote a book by that name. And what he posited is that um, at about the time of the singularity, uh, we will have supercomputers that are so small that they're microscopic and of unbelievably large power, quantum computers, and these things will control assemblers, which are also submicroscopic in size, and these things will, the computers controlling the assemblers, will literally be able to take apart anything and re take it into its individual atoms and reassemble it into anything else. I mean, it's literally pixie dust. It's, it's magic. Like, like a transporter in Star Trek. It's, it's actually, it's been said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And yes, uh, it's possible that we're only a generation away from that at this point. So this is a good reason to, uh, you know, to get wealthy and hang on so you can take advantage of it. Because it'll be very, very interesting at the least. And um, I'm very interested in being entertained, actually.